in the area of um, artificial intelligence. So I was trying my best to organize these activities into three main topics. That is machine learning, computer vision, and biomedical informatics. And like I said, we have a large array of faculty members working on different parts of artificial intelligence. So there's really a lot of pressure on me trying to present them all. Um, unfortunately, given that we only have 15 minutes, so what I'll do is that I'll dive into one of, well, I'll dive into each of these three main topics and highlight a few of the faculty members that are working in that area. All right. So most of the faculty members comes from the CS department, but I have to point out that we do have faculty members come from the DC department, the STAS department, and the BIOS department. All right, so let's look at machine learning first. It's really about developing AI that allow machine to learn from the data. Right? So we do have a nice website. If you're interested, you can click on that website that has almost a full list of faculty members. Um, it's a little bit outdated, but you can still get a good amount of information from there. Um, then let's just really talk about a few faculty members actively working in the area of machine learning. So in Yuliel, um, assistant professor in computer science, um, he, his research is sort of very interesting in the intersection between the theoretic machine learning and the sort of practical machine learning. Right? And, and in the theory side, he's interested in sort of analyzing the models, and the sort of more practical side, he's interested in sort of transfer learning, uh, financial language processing, and also adversarial machine learning. Um, Jerry Drew, again, senior faculty member from CS department. Um, he's done a lot of interesting work in machine learning, including early work on semi supervised learning. Um, his current research interest is to understand this very interesting phenomenon called adversarial samples, which are so these samples with small perturbation actually change the model behavior. So he is working on sort of developing theories to explain adversarial machine learning that combines control theory and statistical machine learning theory. In addition, he is also interested in sort of personalized education using machine learning. Rob Novak, our senior faculty member from our EC department, again, he has been working on machine learning for almost 20 years. He was doing work on source coding, soft space learning, and dictionary learning. Now, his main interest is um, this concept of active learning. The idea is that how can we allow machine to learn from a small amount of data with a human in the loop, right? So the key idea is really allow the machine to improve over time by sort of asking human helper some questions to improve this learning process. Um, Dimitri Papadopoulos, um, I'm not totally sure I pronounced his last name right. So his research, uh, uh, assistant professor in the department, his research sort of lies in the machine learning and the system side. So he's interested in machine learning theory, the optimization technique that enables the learning, and the system that underlies all the sort of learning and optimization, right? A few highlights of his project, so the first statistical training of very large models, robust training of deep models, and robust perception. Um, new faculty member, Sharon Lee, um, she isn't here yet, she will be here in the fall. Semester, new assistant professor at the uh, computer science department. Um, she is interested primarily in deep learning and especially building deep models to learn from a small amount of data and build deep models that can explain itself so that the model can get trust of the human user. She's also interested um, in applying deep models for health data and computer vision, or sort of visual data in this case. Um, if you are interested in machine learning, we have a selection of courses that you can actually interact with our faculty members. Um, so if you're interested, um, if you're interested I will encourage you to look into the details. Now, let's switch gear and really talk about the other part, that is the vision side that I'm working in. So we turn the lights off. So the computer vision research here is also highly disciplinary, interdisciplinary, in the sense that we're not narrowly focused on the pure perception, or sometimes we call that visual recognition part, but really 
the vision research here sort of spans point four and the sort of physics, so we do a lot of physics based sensing. The devices, we do cameras and devices to um, generating to generate new type of visual data. Uh, we do a lot of optimization and machine learning, um, which is sort of common. We also do a lot of statistics to build statistic models of different types of imaging data. Again, let's really just highlight a few faculty members. Mohit Gupta, Assistant Professor of Computer Science. So his research direction is really, really interesting. It's really about building cameras. Right? And these are not the common cameras that are embedded in your phone. So, for example, these are uh, people from the cameras that, are, that can capture the fast moving object at a low light condition. Right? So think about this, this next generation camera technique or technology. So he is also interested in 3D imaging, so developing some new sensor for robotics and um, for human-computer interaction. Um, Rikas Sen, senior faculty member in the biostats department, is more on um, the statistical machine learning for biomedical data side. Um, he's really, really interested in medical image analysis and integrating more for different types of these imaging data to address some of the sort of disease-related hypotheses. Right. So one of the data types that is trying to look into you is fMRI data or free fMRI data uh, with the target to understand um, our Alzheimer's diseases or the challenges in Alzheimer's diseases. And now that's myself, or really a younger version of myself. So I work on what we call variable computer vision. So I develop, my group develops some models that look at data that are captured from a volume of devices. It can be a pair of, a pair of glasses with a camera embedded. It can be a little wristband with multiple cameras embedded. Now the goal is to use these sort of data captured by the body and integrate them with other type of sensor data to understand how uh, what we do in our daily life. Really understand our behavior in our daily life. And then by providing this behavior signal, we can hopefully address many of these sort of challenging, uh, or challenges in healthcare and biomedical companies. Again, we do have um, a number of courses covering computer vision from the um, some undergrad version of computer vision to grad level of computer vision to a few special topics that sort of focus on different aspects of the visual data. So if you're interested um, for the courses are listed on the website. So the last part, um, I'm going to spend a few more minutes to talk about biomedical informatics. Um, so this is really about applying AI technique to um, understand a lot of, them, to, to really address a lot of biomedical applications. So that being said, we do have a lot of different problems that we can consider in this setting. Uh, for example, predicting disease risk. For analyzing the electronic health data, um, or understanding the biological network, and understanding the, the gene sequences. Now, the tools being used is also quite um, diverse, right? including the machine learning models, deep learning models, from the power optimization, probabilistic graphic models, non um, non um, non negative matrix, matrix factorization, and so on and so forth. So, let me just you know, talk to you about. A few uh, the faculty members that are working in this domain, so you can get a sense of uh, what they're working on or what their research interest in. So Tony Peter, my colleague at Biostats Department, he is very interested in sort of developing machine learning and statistical models to understand biological anatomy. Right. Um, really to characterize the dynamic process that are used the biological anatomy. His recent interest um, is sort of trying to probe into or building machine learning models for drug discovery. Right? So you can imagine that you're going to build a model to screen different chemicals and to understand which chemical will be effective to a certain disease, or really to a certain pertain in this case. Right? Um, again, my colleague, Tom Yuli, senior faculty at the Biostats department. Um, he is interested in developing combinatorial optimization and machine learning for large scale biological um, sequence analysis. Um, one of the interesting problems he's currently working on is that 
if we're given a set of the DNA sequences of the species that are currently alive, can we infer the sequence of their ancestors? Or can we really reconstruct the sequence of their ancestor, which is no longer available? Um, Sushmita Roy, again my colleague in the biostats department, um, she is really interested in the genomics data. And in particular, the sort of regulatory mechanism between gene sequences. Like, um, the idea that you have very long gene sequences and you have a you know, segment of genes that sort of interplay with each other, um, but they can be you know, quite far away in that sequence. Now the question is how you do the model to identify the correlation, not only for the nearby segments, but also for the segments that are really, really far away. All right. So she's kind of looking into this matrix spectral vision master to really understand the, uh, the interactions in the gene sequences. Uh, there's a lot of interesting applications in biology um, and, and, and um, breast cancer and um, things like that. Mark Priven, again, a uh, senior faculty member in the Biostats department. So he's developing and applying some machine learning and natural language processing methods to analyze a lot of interesting data types to predict, you know, primarily on the, um, the PHR data, electronic health data, to be able to predict the least risk, to characterize disease progression, or to understand the underlying mechanism of certain diseases. So one of the most recent or very recent projects we're trying to look at how the virus infect, um, to look at the, the pathway of the virus infection. Um, so it's very complicated, but also quite challenging and interesting. Um, again, we do have these courses that focus on different aspects of biomedical informatics. So um, I would encourage you to take a look at these courses if you're interested. Um, I think that's going to be the end of my talk. If you're interested in artificial intelligence, I'll be here for a little while. Feel free to talk. Thanks.